Oh, that was a terrible yeah, thought to start. My name is Brett, and sometimes I wear a beret. I am a cardboard cutout. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I got uh, cardboard Brett here. <laughs> what, if, what if you just sat still the whole video? I was just thinking about that. <laughs> oh, man. People have swapped faces, so it could be that right now. Just like those face filters. Deep fakes. You know, I think every time one of us says something dumb, they have to push the push the button. Oh, is that push what we're going to do? Okay, that's fine. How about that? Hello, my name's Brett. Sometimes we're Brett. And I'm crashing Luke's live stream today so that we can talk about things in depth. All kinds of stuff. A new perspective that you wouldn't have had previously. Yeah, so for those that don't know, Brett is pretty close by here. He lives in Portland, which is a much cooler city than where I live in the suburbs. Um, we did get to go to an actual, for our first game, and we shot footage, I, I'm video coming on that in a couple weeks, but uh, first game in a year and a half? Is of, that, of that scale or just involvement? Yeah. I mean, other than like two people and in a backyard? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we had, it was 12 people, uh, all vaccinated of course, and private property, but uh, it, was, it was really, really fun. It's awesome to actually get out and, and fling foam again, because that's why we all do this in the, in the first place jump into the chat as well yeah to make oh, yeah. sure no one's saying to... mean things about me uh, oh they are are we expecting a live wiki how live wiki how you know <laughs> i have i've legitimately thought about something like that for the future but more of for like an actual event so like if it actually was something i put time and effort into instead of having like a booth at foamcon instead like carving out a <laughs> slot of time where it would be a live presentation i'm not married to the idea just yet. Uh, I'm about as married to it as I am married in real life. So I'm not there just yet. Yeah. I like the idea though. Yeah, it could be fun. But again, I'd have to like get people on board for it. And then when you get people to do that, then they have to focus on being ready for that kind of presentation instead of doing whatever <laughs> else they would want to do. So, but it's an idea. Absolutely. Uh, oh, thanks, Stamp Man. Thanks for the support. Uh, we're trying that out, I guess. <laughs> I forgot about that. Um, we're glad to have you guys here. I know this stream yeah, time's kind of weird, 11 o'clock in the morning, but we tried a late afternoon stream and we had fewer viewers, right, Perry? Yeah. Um, sometime I'll do like an evening, later night thing, after dinner kind of kind of thing, but it's also hard because I don't want to step on toes of other awesome creators. Like I'm not going to stream when Welcome's streaming. I don't want to stream when Bobo's streaming or when Drax's streaming. And that's a lot of days cut out already. You don't want to, yeah, overlap mine as well. Yeah, kind of tough. No matter what you do, Drax is going to stream when he streams. He's yeah, he's, he's kind of all over. He streams a lot, too. Um, well, Twitch is also, I mean, I don't know how you would factor that in. Yeah, Twitch I'm not streaming. I can't do Twitch. I mean, I just don't have. Drax got a lot more time than I do. Uh, you know, with family, you sort of, your hours shrink a little bit. I was going to say, though, Bert, Bert. <laughs> Who am I? For those who haven't seen this, this is that uh, he had it on his channel. You, uh, unknown oh, number of times, uh, you press this and it will launch the, launch the, launch the darts the Porcupine at Porcupine cam. So, yeah, this is um, it's actually a really fun toy. So I'm going to steal this because my daughter is would really worth... have fun with it. <laughs> You're going to steal it for your daughter? Oh, dear. Well, that is a conversation to have. Every time Brett gets something cool, I, I try to steal it for my daughter. And basically. then it gets stolen <laughs> back because that is the natural order of things. Now, the porcupine pop has been around for a while now. I don't know how reliable you can get it in stores. But it also was 20 bucks. So it's, it's I a lot don't know if I'd recommend a $20 porcupine pop. I mean, it's, it's fun, though. I, I don't know if I'd recommend <laughs> it. I would absolutely recommend Ooh. it. I'm sorry. Poor little guy. I'm afraid of darts. We also need to get a little jar for oh, I was, that. I was going to say about your channel, though. You know, people, yeah. you're talking about the live, doing the live wiki how. Brett puts a lot of work into each of his videos. Yeah, like, I, he I, makes it look like it's just an off-the-cuff random thing, but there's a lot of planning. Luke, you put a lot of... You put a lot... Mm, <laughs> Spreadsheet. Mm. I saw your, your okay, tracker. Okay, that's, that's a planning I saw mechanism. Your, yeah. Video itself. You put a lot of effort into your videos as well, Luke. And I know you spend <laughs> just as much time editing these days. And I think you should be commended for that. Hey, on a less sarcastic note, this, this guy and his whole team made 100K recently. That's hey. something to celebrate. And we will do a video to celebrate that. I thought we'd wait until the there might be a play button thing. Yes. I don't even know what it's made of. Is it like a plastic? I don't think it is. Is it metal? It's... I don't know. I thought we'd it's wait until the button shows quality. up. I thought it was decent quality. 
from what I've seen. Oh, uh, it's exciting. Um, yeah, hitting 100K was sweet. I can't, you're at what, 67 or something? That's mind blowing. Yeah, that's about how old I am. You, you got there in much, much faster. How to cheat. That's good. No, Which it's ones? not cheating, it's the algorithm. <laughs> the algorithm. So, this kind of brings us Actual question. to our conversation of the topic today um, about you know, the hobby shift and where things are going. Uh, Fiona Wu asks, what do you think of the airsoft community compared to the phone, phone screen? Oh, that's good. Community? Should I restate the question? Uh, yes, sir. Perry's not on mic today, um, but uh, Fiona Wu asks, uh, what do we think of the airsoft community versus the nerf community? Um, I've played a lot of paintball, a bit of airsoft, maybe a half dozen days, but I never own my own equipment, so I, I haven't been that into airsoft. Um, I had several really bad experiences playing airsoft, both with people basically lighting me up for no reason, just because it was fun. You know, 20 rounds a second, put 40 rounds down on you. Um, I've, I've never had that kind of experience with Nerf, where someone was there to, to not have a good time. I'm not saying that all airsofters are like that. That is definitely not the normal. I've had some really good days of airsoft that have been a lot of fun. It's a different, it's a, generally a different kind of player that wants to go play airsoft. It's more on the milsim side, more kind of imitating real real steel, I guess. And um, isn't necessarily bad. It's just what no, it, and there's it's just what it is. And we have that nerf too, and I think that's that's fine as long as you do it where it's safe. You know, don't run around in public par parks with black blasters, please. Yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, there's there's some similarities there between the two. Uh, airsofters generally don't, from my experience, what I've seen, they don't like to tinker and modify things as much as the Nerf community does. There is modification that can be done. You can upgrade gearboxes, you can replace batteries and things, but it's not as strong of a modding community. Now, I know that not everybody mods Nerf, so, you know, there's kind of two sides of this hobby. How do you feel on that? I have very little context for airsoft. I think I've picked up uh, airsoft once or twice in my life, and that was dating back quite a bit of time now, probably a decade. So I'm sure it's changed since then, and I'm sure I didn't play the same level of what you would maybe stereotypically see on YouTube as like, oh, this is what airsoft is. Um, it was, I mean, yeah. if anything, you could have switched out with Nerf Blasters and it would have been the exact same story for the situation. So my, my context is completely missing, but I, I'd agree. You know, it's, that's just the mindset for Airsoft. And I think, yeah, it, it's totally fine, especially because you've seen well, what I have seen online are all the really cool fields for it that seem to target Airsoft. Um, and it's a little bit different than like paintball as well, because paintball makes a bit more of a mess. You would know this, right? Yeah, yeah. Paintball's a messy. Bit. Paintball's messy, and Oliver, I'm going to get to your question. I'll answer it this because it's a stream; not as many people will see. Uh, but airsoft has some of the coolest <laughs> fields, so that's um, envious. Yeah, airsoft has some of the best fields ever, and they're not messy. Paintball is slippery; it's messy; it's dirty, especially if you want to play indoors. We used to play indoors in Minneapolis um, at what SYO Paintball, I think the place was called. Oh, it's been so many years, but and we played in caves in Missouri, which was fun. But you know, you. You are filthy. You're you're sticky from from paint, which then attracts dirt all day, and it's a it's a very different different thing. Airsoft's a little bit cleaner. Yep. Nerf is definitely clean, though my fingers are always pretty gnarly. I always get scraped up somehow. <laughs> That's how you know you've had a good day. Uh, Oliver Milo is uh, using the is, is donating here, but he's uh, <laughs> asking about the uh, rival edge. Yeah, we'll just we'll just do it. People keep asking every week. This showed up at my house, and I have no idea how it got here. It exists, it's not getting released, and I do not, I honestly do not know any more than that. It doesn't work very well, it doesn't feed very well. So you're showing that off in the stream that I'm in, just to further blacklist me in life? Yeah, now, now Hasbro really. Um, a customer sent me this, or I'm not even saying a customer actually, I guess it's, they haven't bought anything from me because I don't have any account on them, but it got sent to me by somebody that has our return address, which is, you know, I don't know, there's 20,000 customers or so <laughs> that have shopped with us. Um, it unfortunately didn't get released. I don't know why. I wish Hasbro would. It would be really cool. Uh, but they have not. So maybe they'll change their mind, but it seems like they might be kind of done with Rival. Hey, Luke, how does it feed? It doesn't feed well. Oh, weird. Yeah, it, it, it really, I mean, it works OK with this blaster, but it doesn't work with anything else. Thought. And it um, does not feed fast enough to do like a full auto dump out of a Jupiter. You'll get gaps and, yeah. and things like that. So. 
Yeah. Oops. I don't really want to mess with Hasbro, so we haven't uh, shown that off or done a review. It obviously would have got a lot of views because I don't think it exists anywhere. Um, but uh, pictures, pictures on the internet. Yeah. I wonder. I wonder if that was like one of the last nails in the coffin for them on like magazines for balls, because I, you know they came out with uh, Hyper that yep. had no magazines, um, and you know as far as we're aware. And I don't... Nothing planned for the future? Do you, and do you think we're going to get magazines with Hyper? I don't know. How would a I, magazine work best with the sticky Hyper I, rounds? I don't think, I don't think we will. Uh, I mean, I sort of tried to... Uh, I mean, I just tried to put it in a proton pack, to a tube to food, air feed. And they are sticky as can be. Do not want to go down tubes because they bind up. Like, each ball binds up next to the one be before it. There's just the coefficient of friction is too high. Same uh, thing when you try and like swallow a bunch of them at once. Uh, it gunks up. <laughs> you absolutely <laughs> die. <laughs> Don't do that. What is it? What is the per, what does the loser get when this goes off? No, I told you the actual game is you have different colored darts, and so it's not necessarily you lose when it goes off. It's just you might be the most caught off guard because other people can be ready to go in and grab the different colored oh, darts we're, since we're they have different, it's like, they have um, different point values. Hungry, hungry hippos. We want, we want to get those darts. Yeah. Now, we don't have to do that. <laughs> I'm just saying that's the initial like intention of the game. Ah. We've got Boomstick and Phone Knight in the chat. Nice. Hey, guys. Uh, hey, Timmy's in here, too. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> silly Butts uh, asks, in the theme of the chat, how do you think uh, that wars will change over the next year, mainly focusing on the long lasting effects of uh, what's been going on the last... War never changes. Yeah. Um, and uh, will YouTube be at APOC 2021? I would like to go to APOC. I guess we'll start. Oh, so I, everybody probably can't hear the question, but uh, Silly Butts asked uh, to go with the theme of the stream. How do you think the wars will change over the next year, mainly focusing on the long lasting effects of the pandemic? Um, unfortunately, I think it's going to, it's, it's hurt a lot of clubs already. I think there's a lot of hesitation in starting up games and a lot of people wanting to be cautious, which I think is great. Um, our actual games up here haven't, haven't started yet. Uh, I don't organize myself personally. I'd like to, but my responsible, responsibilities around here are pretty heavy and uh, dad mode as well. So I don't... I think it's very similar for a lot of us who have done that before in the area too. And I think, frankly, the answer to that is it really depends on where you are. I know some people were playing through the pandemic Slow clap. I'll keep it nice for this stream. Just for them. Yeah, cool. uh, press for you. But uh, yeah, it's, it's really going to depend on, on where you are. I think it's yeah very possible to have much safer games right now, especially with uh, vaccinated folks. But there's still a lot of unknowns, so I don't judge anyone for being a little hesitant to jump into a 4,000-person event. That still seems like a bit much. Yeah, we didn't go to... Jared's epic Jared battle. Epic Jared we were, battle. We were going to go last year, and we canceled everything, but I think we lost our flight credit, dude. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Great. Yay. Cool. But we're, our tickets might still be redeemed. No, you, re you got yours back. No, like I got a voucher, but the voucher expired in a year, and it's been a year. <laughs> oh, I thought you could push it forward to the next event. I See you there. Oh, that ticket. Yeah. I don't think I ever got a refund. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, That's but cool. uh, Great. I think games are going to change. I and it's for me, it's really sad to see, obviously, because I, I love the game side just as much as the modding side, and I want obviously financially, I want people to be out playing. I, the business does better when when everybody's actually at games. Epic spreader event, <laughs> right? I mean, it's not. That's how it works. You aren't. Most people aren't buying blasters and and parts to put them up on their wall and never touch them again. Nope. You know, some are. Which is fine too, actually. That's cool. If that's but how you roll. That's how you roll. Everybody should move the way they want too. That's another good thing to just mention. As long as you're not actually hurting people, you're tagging yeah. people. That's fine. Yeah. You want to go through some other questions, even if they're not. Yeah, I, I see one here that's yep. um, uh, silly butts is saying Galaxy is working on a hyper mag on the Nerf Discord. That's sweet. I'd love to see how that goes. Oh, I have. Okay. You yes. have seen it. Okay. I think I've seen working on that. I mean, like. Yes, community, community folks will do everything and anything, and that's why, uh, shout out to everyone who does that, because it's cool. But for Hasbro, I don't know if that's something that they would do. <laughs> we got a local pickup. 
or something or delivery. <laughs> they, they're te the team's on it. I'll take care of them. Um, um, let's see. Potato Biscuit says, I think Hyper will be killed. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Maybe that it's just not going to be popular. Um, I, I think Hyper will kill Rival uh, I think in Hasbro's eyes. So I, <laughs> unfortunately, some killing being so. done right before our eyes right now. We had, we had a game. I have very mixed opinions on Hyper. You can't confirm this either. What can't I get on footage? Oh, no, come on now. <laughs> we'll bring this up. He's, he's, okay, he's just okay. going to run solo. I, I pushed a button. And <laughs> we played a game. Oh, yeah, let me take that one. We, have, we played a game, the three of us. Perry was there too. But um, I ran this like half the rounds, and on several of them, it was CQB stuff, so very, very close quarters. And uh, this, this blaster is awesome. This is, this is by far the best. Uh, Hyper Blaster. It confirmed your And all I have in it is just the little hop-up tab and a spring. That's it. And it it rocked. I mean, unfortunately, the, the round I wasn't recording, I went 2 and 14. So I got 14 people out. And these guys are just like, no, you didn't. If it didn't you did, happen. I don't know. I mean, he's even <laughs> I, on my We have another round time. where I, I got at least a few people. Anyway, it's an effective, really effective blaster, but it doesn't. it's still not going to compete. If you're playing in any range, it's not going to touch the stuff from Dart Zone as far as you know, at a range, but HVZ, you know, 40 rounds in one little small package. I used it a whole day and, and had maybe one time it did, it misfired and the rest was awesome. So I, I'm, I don't think Hyper's going to go away. But. I forget if you mentioned this in your review. I know I heard it in at least one Hyper review when they all came out, but isn't, it's still so baffling and telling that all three of the Hyper Blasters that came out had different front ends. Like they experimented with it differently. Yeah. And it's not like, oh, we did the same thing for the two Springers and we did one thing different for the Flywheelers. And it, for the Flywheeler. It gets weirder than that, too, because the Siege 50 has a hop up. The Rush 40 has no hop up. The Siege 50's hop up does nothing. There is a piece of rubber, a TPU in there, that I filmed with a camera and it does not contact the rubber at all. Oops. So I made my own hop up, but it. I, I don't understand. So that's no very sense. bizarre. And that's why it's also very curious, like, what will come next? And will it also be hopper-fed? Will it be completely different? What would be the next kind of hyper-blaster? Because these are obviously fitting some sort of style. Yeah. Um, if they look like this, that's also, I mean, echoing what everyone said, this looks good. Hyper-styling looks good. Seems and this like one performs well. It's comfortable. Yeah, they seem to perform where but again, people would want. Again, what they're talking about here, though, is the hobby, right? It's yep. the hobby is we're short darts. That's where the hobby's going. We're short. I, no matter what, I think Dart Zone. Dart Zone has changed this hobby for for the better, in my opinion. I mean, it's it's fabulous having. They're talking about ten blasters coming out, two of which have been been released. Third has been announced, the Mark III. Ten blasters. Ten like for the year. They alluded to like within the next year. I believe it's within the next year. Someone might have it I here. I thought I heard it was ten blasters for this year. I think it's for this, yeah, for the release Well, that the release like year. all the yeah. other ones we've gotten, though, right? We've only got four or five of those, right? Conquest, Matrix Fire. Tomahawk. Monolith, Tomhawk. Tomhawk. Uh, <laughs> ne <laughs> nope, not, that was a Nexus. That was the last year. Uh, Max Striker? Did you uh, Max say Striker. that? That's five. What else are we missing? Are we missing one? Um, Probably. Just Dart Yeah, Dart Zone we're just like trying to figure scary. out the Dart Zone. Conquest is the other one. Did you get Conquest? Yep. <laughs> um, so we're five at ten. Five, we might nope. have five more coming. I mean, that's pretty smart. Obviously, the Mark III is one for yep. this year. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. What else? Um, maybe, oh, maybe some of the reskins. I think that was also um, hypothesized that some of the reskin, like Nexus variants, like the gold and that. Uh, no, what would they call I don't it? think like, they'd count reskins, you know, right? Oh, that doesn't seem. I wouldn't put it past that a company to I do mean, that. I would not. They seem really, really honest in their maybe, marketing. <laughs> maybe. It's possible. And uh, just in kind of a similar vein, someone, uh, someone asked if you were thinking of making a proton pack that would uh, use 50 caliber balls. I'm going to expand that question. Do you think there's going to be a place in a hobby for Caliber foam balls, like yeah. Ball so do I think do I think there's a place uh, for foam balls instead of the rubbery stuff? I don't think they'd perform well enough if they if we went like if you took this ammo and just made it, you know, like Rival or a little denser than Rival. It wouldn't fly as far. It needs the extra weight and density to to perform well. They can shotgun spread, which is yeah. fun. 
but for performance. Um, yeah. I'm looking at some questions here too. So the Potato Biscuit says, uh, what do you think about the Dart Zone Mark III? I think that is probably the most game-changing product they've announced yet. It's one thing to get into a Springer territory where Jet's already done it, where the, uh, you know, the Caliburn already existed. Uh, you know, similar products that they just made massively better. I think Flywheeler is another beast altogether, especially when you've got to deal with some sort of either lithium or nickel metal hydride battery. I, I, it's a big step, and I think it's going to change a lot for the hobby when you can go buy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my uh, guess at $200 for the blaster. The Mark 1.1, 1. 1, Mark 1 was 180, right? You and Original I both listing, that. yeah, it was 150 plus 30. I think we're going to see this be 200. I don't see a way. It's a pretty good sized blaster. I'm stoked. I, I think it's going to be a, a really, really solid product. I would be surprised if it's not stellar out of the box. Um, as long as Dart Zone sends me one for free, I'm happy to give it positive <laughs> marks. I will get one no matter what. I bought every Dart Zone blaster that's come out this year. I'm, I'm willing to, you know, kind of put my morals aside, any little nitpicks aside for free stuff. Uh, no, no thanks. Yeah. No? No, can't relate? No. Weird. Weird. Very odd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. oh yeah. Um, Michael Jordan left a, a pie. <laughs> 314, get it? Uh, could you describe Ragnarok and End War? Um, so two different events, somewhat similar. Uh, Ragnarok October, I'll start with End War. Uh, End War is the largest HVZ game in the world, as far as I know. Um, the last one we went to was around 1,000 players. Uh, it takes place at rotating campuses, usually on the East Coast. We haven't done anywhere. It's been, yeah, primarily. We did based. Athens, Ohio. We did, where else did we go? <laughs> We're in Georgia. Georgia. Oh, yeah, that. It was hot. It was you guys. Hot. It was really hot. Um, Very damp. But it's a standard, pretty standard HPC game, but it takes place uh, over the course of two or three days. We have a convention on the first day on the Friday, and then two days of actual gameplay. Gameplay goes into the night, so there's night play, which is fantastic. And it's like a thousand people. Um, and, you know, close, around there anyway. Yeah. And it Over was, the course of the weekend, I think. And it's everybody. It's everybody in the hobby pretty much shows up. The international guests. It was, it, it was spectacular. It's the event I look forward to. You know, I have looked forward to every year. And now we've had to miss, you know, sadly miss two years. Yeah. And, you know, we had a little trade show with, I don't know, 50 or so booths with all, all of your favorite vendors and YouTubers showing off stuff they've made, stuff they're selling, new designs. And your least favorite. Yeah, and your least favorite ones too. I mean, ones. we're all there. All everyone <laughs> can't can't miss them. Um, but no, it's um, a really really tremendous event, and it's also like this opportunity for the whole community to kind of come together and be together, and and in the real world instead of just the digital space. Yeah, I was talking to someone about this recently too. Just the the kind of things that change and the memories you make from these events. It's like, you know, any, not to make it genericized, but it's like, you know, what a convention can do for any sort of community. And what, you know, like you go for one reason and you come back with memories for a different one. It's like, oh, you know, I was really excited to see these blasters, but instead you came back like, oh my gosh, I can't believe at two in the morning we were still working on this blaster for an event <laughs> that was supposed to happen at eight. And, you know, this happened and this happened, but it's like, those are the kind of positive uh, nuggets that keep you around and keep you invested into going to more events like that in the future, or just like, you know, little local games and you find more people who are nearby that you can then form your own clubs too, if you haven't already. I, I mean, I'm halfway, la halfway between because laughing and you crying. Know you know it's true. Thinking about um, you know true. Thomas breathing fire at 11, 11 p.m. Yeah. at night. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it's just fun. It's, it's a amazing, amazing part of, part of the hobby. And I think, uh, we can't miss another year. We've got to have it next year. Yep. And it, um, for whatever reason, it, it got canceled this year as well. Obviously, like, the international the stuff. I mean, as you mentioned too, like we've had a, not like you know a massive international presence, but there has been an international presence, and with even national travel being kind of, uh, it, it's been moving. So I think it, I, I'm not going to say it was the right or wrong decision because I wasn't involved in any of it yeah. to, to date, but. I think uh, because of how weird it was, it maybe made sense still to to not try and push it to like the end of the year, but just to and it hold is. Off I mean, to now. be fair, it's not a it's not a good event for during the pandemic, honestly, because the gameplay itself 
it's HPZ. You've got people, you know, in the start, it's, it's 20 zombies running at you, and at the end, it's 900 zombies <laughs> running at you, and, you know, they have to touch Join you to, to, to get you out. Yeah. And then we're all in these, you know, hallways that are just packed with people and auditoriums and things, and so it's pretty close quarters. And it wouldn't the be... event actually, you know, has to take place on a campus or whatever location that has to sign off on this and give approvals, yeah. and for a lot of places, as I think we saw for RAGFest, which we can get into next, was, you know, they weren't willing to kind of give that window that we needed to plan. Yeah. So you couldn't, if you couldn't reserve it, like, at least half a year in advance, then nothing was going to happen because you can't just, like, get it a month before the event and be like, oh, perfect, all right, now we can start, because that's not how it works. No, it, it took several dozen people planning yep. and working really hard to make these events. Uh, it should also be noted that, like, these events are not just, there are missions, there are themes, there are, uh, they really, the last one was Harry Potter theme, which was quite fun. That was the last one, right? It's been yeah. two years. This is terrible. Um, do you want to talk on Rag Ragnarok, how that kind of compares and it is similar? Sure. So Ragnarok Oktoberfest is in the California Bay Area. And similar, I think they have a small convention prior to the event. But the difference mm -hmm. between the humans versus zombies is that it's humans versus humans versus zombies. So you're <laughs> split into human factions. Uh, there are lives between human factions. So like if you tag another person on another team, they can go back and respawn. But all amidst that, there are zombies running around who can do their normal zombie things, which would be tag you, you join the horde. And they've also made some very impressive props uh, up to, well, from, from the start to the very, very end climactic uh, final showdowns. So big stories, uh, different events taking place during the actual gameplay like it changes from daytime to nighttime and I think previously at least both times I've been it's just been kind of the one day it's not yeah. like spread over the uh, a couple of days for the weekend it's just the one day of HVZ or humans versus humans versus zombies and you can do little side missions and gain points for your team and then try to see how long you survive into the night which yep. is I mean it's a very oh, unique experience and I like that uh, and then the next day has been the competitive side, which I don't know if you mentioned that for End War as well. But oh, like yeah. The Foam Pro Tour, just a, a different competitive for Ragnarok has been the King of the Hill. And then for End War was Foam Pro Tour, which obviously things can change, but slightly different so rule sets. It's important that like, both of these events are, are kind of like three things in one. So you've got your trade show, the HVZ, and the competitive, plus all the hanging out and mingling and just having fun. Let me see your mic for just a second. The, the pack. Uh oh, technically, hopefully, uh, we're always trying to improve our audio setup and stuff here. Can, Not me. Sure Anytime there's two of us, mm. it's always a, a little a little different. Check yours one Mine's right here. Yeah. 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 Okay. There's Sweet. Just apparently, a clicking sound. Oh, okay. Good. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of those events. They're really fun. I. Yep. We'll never miss another one. Oh, and it's worth noting too, there's a UK version. Foam Fest. Foam Fest, which it's for you. We're gonna go, right? Well, hopefully at one point. I've been we'll hesitant. We'll go to the next one. I've been hesitant because I've never been to the UK, so it'd be a lot for me to try and we balance what the whole trip would be like. So I'd probably want to do like a lot longer of a trip just so I can actually experience. It'd be worth everything. it once you're already there. Yeah, I mean, the crazy thing is for us, we're in the Northwest, so flying to the Southeast in the US, like Georgia, it already. costs more to go there than it does to go to the UK, <laughs> as far as tickets anyway. So we'll, I think we got to do that. Best part of Envor is FoamCon. And yeah, I, I think, um, I don't know what the future plans are for those events, because obviously there's still a lot of uh, things that need to be figured out. But I, I think I would agree that if it could be arranged where like FoamCon could be a full day, I think that's a really attractive thing for people, because it would also make it would put a little less pressure on people trying to like get through FoamCon, and and also because some people during FoamCon are like, no, I need to focus on like the HVZ next. My loadout's not ready. Like I'm going to be doing this, so yeah. some people have to dip early so they can set up the HVZ stuff, and then you've got to like you know from a vendor standpoint, you got to pack up really quick so that you can play because you want to play. You don't want to just <laughs> be sitting around doing nothing. That's why you're at the event. Yeah. So hopefully that that would be cool. I just know. There's only so many hours in the day, and there's only so many days that we can fit into an extended weekend. It's yeah. tricky, but definitely. We'll are we? Uh, how are we doing on audio? I know uh, we got it. It's it's slightly better, but there's still like a slight popping that people are hearing. I bet it's the mics. Uh, yeah. We'll test for next time. I'll order another mic, guys, to get these. It's We're trying to use two of the same mic. Do we know which one it is, or is it both? Uh, it, 
Uh, I have it set to mono right now, so I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Hero tour. That would be sweet. Um, Stampman, thank you, uh, says, what do you think about replicating uh, uh, real steel from video games to make, put them into 3D printed blasters in real life? I actually think that's really cool. Um, I mean, there's tons of stuff from, like, the last game I played seriously was, like, Gears of War, which I know is not current anymore, but there are a lot of, if I find the right blaster that I want to get going on, I'll probably do it. Oh, waffle. Got it. What are you finding? I mean, this is basically like video game. Yeah. Come to life. Which is sweet? No. <coughs> oh. That's pretty close. I... Oh, gosh. <laughs> Reload. Um, no, I think that's a great idea. And I think there's darts. a lot of opportunity there. For me, I'm still developing my skills. Some of the, some of the pieces that you would need to design for like a really, the, the modelers that are designing a, a blaster for a video game, uh, some of which are friends of mine. I have friends that work at Sony and Activision and other places, but they, they don't have to play by any rules. The, the thing doesn't have to be comfortable. It just has to <laughs> look cool. Hasbro already has fully adopted that. Yes, oh, I, I'm, I'm, I got a whole wall Same. of that over here. Busby, get your grips figured out, Busby. Seriously, Busby. What are you doing? You're not watching this either. <laughs> no. <laughs> have, you, have you seen the, the pistol one for I haven't, Adventure Force, the revolver? The I haven't gotten my hands revolver? on that yet, no, but I've heard no one's physically gotten their hands on it because you can't. It's too small of a grip. <laughs> what are you doing, Busby? At least they're colorful. I think, but I, yeah, I mean, I think making stuff from video games is awesome. You also can, depending on what engine it's in, you can rip the files so you can get some reference point. It'll have no scale, but you'll actually have some some sizing, but part of my problem is the software they're using for that is, is a different kind of modeling than I'm doing as far as mechanical, I'm doing more mechanical drafting where everything's dimensioned um, and that's more surface modeling or T-spline modeling and it's a different skill set than I currently have. So I would almost need to do a really good prop one. I would, I would need a ton of extra time or someone to make the shell and I do the internals. Do you play video games though? Not as much as I used yeah. to. I once played a lot, but- um, easily. Yeah, definitely underqualified yeah. At, at the moment. Uh, mm. I mean, I used to play a copious amount of video games, but uh, something, something happened a couple of years ago and that changed. Hmm. Was it when the Fire Nation attacked? <laughs> Weird. I would say to add on to that, obviously, I think we've already touched on it too, but when you're bringing like video game uh, firearms into real life, that's also the weird you know, thing we're treading on here by making videos about them. It's like, be aware that if they look like an actual firearm in the game and you're trying to bring that to real life, oh, it might look like a real thing. And that's what we always try to distance ourselves from with showing off to the whole world. So if you're gonna make it look like a firearm, then just be aware of that. Keep it safe, handle it like you would anything like airsoft, paintball. Yeah, and Timmy, you know, just, Timmy just made a comment about that too. It's like the issue is the silhouette and with people being basically yeah. being idiots and, and bringing them you know, painting them black and running around in pub public parks. Because yeah. which... if you're going to be safe about them, keep them in a case and you bring them to a, a private field where you've okayed that that's yeah, that totally fine, matter. that's great. But with our hobby and, you know, you put it up on a wall like this, it's like, oh, it probably will jump out a little bit. But then for some people it blends in and there has to be a distinction somewhere. And it depends on where you are, obviously, but that's the, the hard yeah. thing, I think, with uh, like you or me making videos about stuff like that. Just like, hey, look at this all black. Um, uh, the thing, I mean, even, <laughs> even a Lynx maybe, but you know, like the uh, gecko, all black gecko, nice. Now that's yeah. a firearm. So I saw someone comment that there was a, uh, they wanted to paint the Spyro one all black, and I was just like, why? <laughs> Spyro one all black, maybe not. Um, uh, Joshua Robles here says, uh, as a professional mechanical designer, I've got tons to say about those who model for uh, video games and those who make products. Long story short, mechanical drafting slash CAD is way more involved, 100% right. I mean, the, uh, you just don't have to follow any rules of any, anything in design when you're making a prop that exists in a virtual space held by a non-existent virtual hand. It's just a completely different thing. And that's why this stuff looks so cool, but it doesn't always translate over to what we do. And then even if it does, it's a lot more work to do it properly dimensioned and manufacturable is the other thing. That's why Hasbro struggled so much to get the Roblox blasters. <laughs> oh, shots fired. And for, oh. 
Hasbro. I don't know why I'm protecting Hasbro. Why? <laughs> this well, this is the Hasbro <laughs> Porcupine Pop, so he's protecting the great Hasbro. Stantman says he can give me a shell of a blaster. I might be interested in that at some point. Oh no, what do we got going is that on flying here? Flying overhead or driving by? Have, um, Iceblades65 says, have either of you tried the concept pistol from Devil Z Nerfworks? I'm not actually aware of this. I'm gonna look it up. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Milan though. I haven't, I haven't seen it in person before. Fun story, last end war, the only last one we got to go to. This man won, were you with a Maverick? We'll put one in air he was the last, because there's no winning. He was the last man standing. There were there were quite a few of us that were at the location, so I would consider myself one of the last few to get tagged out before the game ended. There were some people who still survived afterwards, but then they were considered dead after the event closed. So and then sure. So and Milan. Was he was there. the last one standing, but uh, Milan, who owns Devil Z Nerf Works, is his company. He um, basically made me last way more rounds than I ever would have. Cause he, <laughs> he literally just put a hand on my back. I got the proton pack and he just guided me the whole time and he rocked it because if it wasn't for him, I would have been out You've been hours out. and hours. You'd have been out of darts. I, no, I would have been a, I would have been a, ah, ah. Okay, so this, this pistol does look really cool. I, um, I'm gonna have to ask him about this. I wonder if he's making and selling things. I see the kits and I see all and kinds Milan of stuff. And was on my foam pro tour team and he played very well. So. Yeah. He's a cool dude. I hope Very I'm looking forward to hanging man. out with him again. Yeah, and so that's the kind of stuff we definitely miss too. I'll, Seeing um, people every now and I'll then reach out to Milan about this though. I'm taking a screenshot so I remember to go look at this again later. I think, um, ooh, this looks very, very cool. Um, we don't offer a short dart flywheeler and he's in a different country, so maybe it would make sense to license or something. I'll have to, I'll have to chat with him because that does look really, really cool. You're only really invested in Hyper. No. I'm not designing anything Hyper for Hyper. Hyper is the future. I, I mean, I design little things for Hyper, but I'm not making a blaster. Well, you don't want to design big things for Hyper. Hyper's small. small. Very small ball energy, Luke. Oh, for the pun. <laughs> I didn't even have to talk about the Hyper tourney. Um, oh, and uh, Katie Action, I saw you posted this twice, but I'll, I'll respond, sorry. Uh, for 100K subs, you should shoot 100,000 rival th rounds through a proton pack. That would be brutal and take a while. Math, hold on, hold on. 100,000, I should be able to do this in my head, but I haven't had lunch yet. We can go about 20 runs. That's 4,761 seconds divided by 60. That would take a while. That would be an hour, wait, that's not right. 100,000, yeah, it would be an hour of firing. I think that would be a long video and a lot of dead Jupiters. The problem with the proton pack, you guys, is that a thousand rounds once through it is fine, but if you're gonna try to put 10,000 or 50,000, you're gonna burn out whatever you put it through. Cause you just can't run, you can't do it to a strife either. Like if you take a strife and a modded strife and fire 420 round magazines through it, you're gonna burn out your motors. So what I'm hearing is that the proton pack is a faulty design. That's what I gained from all. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, that's fun. I like these. You can reload it. You like. Oh, this is this is fun. Luke likes uh, elite darts. Confirmed. These are elite 2.0 darts. They're, they're... Eight, I'm not even loaded yet. I'll have to press it in a second. Castrol is a little involved to build. Not too bad, but I didn't build it myself. To be fair, uh, Edison Huff mentioned that Castrol is a really sweet little blaster. Um, very very fun. Jeez. Castrol. <laughs> yeah. People are suggesting I license the Castrol, and Timmy is in here. That's pretty funny. Ow. The only problem, the problem with the Kestrel for like, from a bulk sale perspective is uh, we don't have the solenoids at, for a reasonable price. They're just, they're pricey. They're just, they're too big. And uh, with the import duties right now, it's hard to source and, like the same height and get them stand. any better. What is this? That's, it's clearly optimized. I'm taller than you. <laughs> wow, what a controversial <laughs> statement that is. Yeah, very much. Uh, yeah, like oh, here. fire 100 of them for a thousand rounds. Okay, well. That would be that would be you acceptable. Could, That's a lot a, of proton packs. Hundred thousand hyper. No, that'd be easier. No. If you have hundred thousand. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh my, my gosh, the price of getting that. Much. Um, this is this is for my daughter. Hi, sweetie. Hi, Hazel. Oh, I'm not your dad. Sorry. Hi there. Hope you're having fun. <laughs> uh, Pamela Pamela Goodman, interesting name, says. 
Uh, are there any blasters that fire, fire hearts from Hazel, Pamela, and, or Mariel, and Mama? Um, no. There are no, do you know any blasters that fire hearts? That sounds dangerous. Uh, I, I don't know. know. Blaster that fire, uh, fires fires baby. babies. <laughs> we have a baby blaster. <laughs> Apparently my girls are watching from home. That's kind of sweet. Oh man, I have to shape up. Okay. <clears throat> um, what else we got here for questions? Drac had a sword custom. Yeah, they're not really custom. The solenoids, they're just the ones off AliExpress with an extra spring. There's not much, there's nothing to sourcing making a solenoid. We've got a manufacturer lined up, but the problem is the cost is insanely high. Shipping's really bad right now and the tariffs on them, it's 25% uh, as part of the trade war. And then there's a normal import of, I think it's 15%. It might be 7.6, but it's, it's one of those. So you're talking, you could be upwards of 40% additional cost just in import duties. And then shipping's very high right now and hard to book. Solenoids are heavy, so I think that's why the Flywheel of the World solenoids ends up being $32 or whatever they are each, which is pretty, pretty hard. Hey, it's Eli. Eli's in here. Eli designed the uh, Tachi magazine. And among many other fun designs, we still want your uh, AEG or whatever that thing is. <laughs> Hard tip darts, that's pretty fun. I heard hard tip darts, oh no. Oh, sorry, other Timmy, this is not the same Timmy. I'm, s wow, that's hilarious. Same name and roughly the same location. Sorry, other Timothy, or the only Timothy that's here. <laughs> oh, this is a good poll. Yeah, we need to pull this, uh, Perry. What color should we do for the next batch of Tachi magazines? Yeah, I already did a poll this Monday. Oh, he already did a poll. What, what were the results? Because <laughs> Eli's in here asking. <laughs> Let me look that up. Give me one moment. Yeah, Eli, please give us the AEG or, or whatever the thing is you're working on. Um, I didn't even hear that from Eli. Someone else told me he was working on it. <laughs> He's checking on that on that post, but I think it was clear. Um, uh, 55% wanted them. 55% want clear. Yep. What's the next number after that? Um, well, when I was looking at the comments. This is for the Tachi magazines. <coughs> uh, we I won't uh, do black, normal black. That would make sense. Yeah. So we've got um, clear, then at 14%, we've got, oh, 15%, we've got red, 14%. 15% no. red. Okay, so 55% clear, 15% red. Yeah and then it falls off after that. I guess it might be clear then. We're gonna have to work that out. It's clear. It's, it's clear, uh, no, no puns. You, because we have no other puns. categories in the comments, we got a lot of pinks. A lot of purple. people wanted pink and purple too. It's yeah. hard because we, um, I believe it's a thousand pieces per color to do another, that's pretty much the case with most, most things. A thousand units is like a <laughs> kind of good starting point, but we have, that's a lot to go through, so we have to make sure the color is popular, which is why we ask you guys. I think when Clear Magazines came out for Nerf, they were instantly the most popular yeah. because the, the argument of, oh, but other people can see your ammo is, who cares? <laughs> if they're that close, <laughs> you're done matter. already. It doesn't matter, they're probably <laughs> on your team. If it's clear and you can see it, that's, that's worth it. Because even I saw comments on um, like my most recent thing with the, the Ultra, uh, select and the magazines being clear on one side, oh, okay. like one on the right, one on the left. It's like, why not just make it clear? Because like, so you can see on one side versus. That is kind of weird. Just make it all clear. <coughs> if that's if you're going to commit to like half clear, maybe they thought that was a cool look. I don't know. What what were they thinking? I don't know. It's it's um, Anyone it's guess? not their A list on that project, right? No, it's their ultra list. <laughs> ultra list. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Edison Huff says, what, when considering blasters to, blaster designs to license, what do we look for? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the main thing I would look for is it's got to be close to production ready. Um, I love a lot of the community printed blasters. This is not me throwing shade, but there are blasters I have printed that would be an absolute nightmare to print in volume and sell and, 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 and customer service and all of that. Um, like the Lepus is a super cool blaster, but just the way it prints and comes together, it's just not, um, there'll be more things I would want to, uh, too many things I'd want to change and I would need to pull the files over to 
to, to spend a lot of time manipulating them. And then it's um, just design or printability because a lot of people are designing just however they feel like it to, to get a one-off done, but maybe it has tons of support or bad overhangs or parts print inconsistently because of how they're designed. So we kind of look for parts that are, you know, designed really well for printing. And a good example of this is like the Lynx is, uh, we're not selling the Lynx, I would love to, but can't, but it is, it is like a, it's perfectly designed. There's no support and it prints. Perfectly designed. It prints beautifully, it's be. super durable, so it's a very good candidate to, to license and design, that sort of thing. And then assembly is a big part of that too, because no matter what we sell, even if we do the kits, a lot of people are gonna ask for assembled and it takes a lot of time, so like the links, my first links I built in 25 minutes with zero instructions, didn't watch the video, got it right. And that is pretty much the best you can expect. Oh, he's, oh, I made fun of him. I wasn't trying to make fun These of are, him. These are, I mean, I feel like it's a personal insult just because, wow. He's just a professional links builder though. No, i unprofessional links builder. My table that's about to fall apart. <laughs> probably fix that. You also have a lot more experience just, you know, designing and assembling blasters of the 3D printed nature. So it makes sense. I did not, it's not what I do. Yeah. I'm not optimized for that. Yeah, you did well. <laughs> Survived. <laughs> also, you know, when you're sitting there watching like whose line is it anyways, it takes more time. Haha, <laughs> funny people doing funny stuff. Oops, what did I do? I spilled <laughs> slug slime all over my hands. <laughs> Don't do that. I can't, um, I used to do the like work and watch stuff all through college and post-college, but I no longer can have, like I cannot have a second thing in the background. Maybe it's just the type of work I'm generally doing. I, if someone's talking, I can't, I cannot focus well enough on what I'm doing unless it's... For links, it's probably not as big of a deal. You could probably multitask. Yeah, that. I guess I could probably do that. Most but of the I time I'm, for some stuff, I'm yeah. like emailing or when I'm designing, I kind of want, I don't want part of my brain in thinking and I don't yeah. know, it's just hard. Well, next thing you know, yeah, you've, you've screwed your finger into the blaster. You're wondering, why is this not working? <laughs> also, why is my hand magnetic? Oh, uh, Zach Leak, I never saw the first one. Thanks for repeating it, actually. Uh, when is any idea when Coop is going to do the 430 dart challenge? Uh, I'm not sure. He had the blaster, the, the, the Jupiter and everything as of last, and the proton pack as of last week. So I think it's going to be fun because it should annihilate even his, did he do seven? It was a... 9x chaos? 9 chaos. So it should beat, the single Jupiter proton pack should beat the 9x chaos. And it should be the number one place, I hope. So we'll see. And then if someone else beats it, I'm sending him a double headed something. Well, <laughs> you could attach several proton packs to the chaos. <laughs> that should be fun, though. Here's an interesting question. Do you want to talk on this, Brett? Because you and I have both played competitive. Uh, Searing Phoenix says, so the FPS ceiling has slowly crept over up over the last five years. We've both witnessed that, obviously. Um, do you think it's going to go any higher than 150 for out of the box slash HVZ and 200, 200, 250 for competitive? So those two ceilings, are those going to continue to go up or? Uh, that, well, I mean, just that HVZ, you know, like out of the box slash HVZ. HVZ is so weird because, and we were talking about this earlier just for like close quarters, gameplay and the beauty of that is that you don't have to have a blaster that hits super super hard you can bring yeah. like a maverick kind of performance to that you could dominate it you right? could bring hyper to that too even though it's like not 150 but if you're <laughs> if you're only trying to match those high ceiling numbers then like for a one a 150 fps game where the nexus pro out of the box is now like right around that but there has also been discussion like is that too powerful in some cases would you want to downgraded to reach so i don't know it's really gonna depend on the clubs whether they do like actual caps or like soft caps with an average um i think it's perfectly reasonable as it is if you want to have something that's like a 200 fps cap or a 250 that's fine but people have to be aware that that's what it is and also i'm fully like happy to wear like extra kind of face protection mm -hmm. up to that point like i know a lot of people still wear the kind of like standard eyewear or just regular like protective glasses up to 250. Um, but there's definitely an argument to be made that after 200 FPS, you know, if you're playing with people who aren't aware of that, they should be wearing something a bit more, yeah. just because we are shooting something that's got more mass than an airsoft BB 
um, not more than a paintball round, of course. Yes, Those are yeah. going faster. <laughs> um, over, over 300, I think, like, hot take, of course, for location. If you're playing with the right people for that, sure, that's great. But you're probably playing the wrong hobby at this point. And yes, that's my personal hot take. And but like, I mean, to kind of elaborate on that, I, I kind of agree because part of, for me, what's really fun about Nerf, and I like all the different kinds of Nerf, but I like getting a little closer to people. So if we get blasters, you know, if you start shooting 300, like paintball FPS, which again, the kinetic energy is way, way lower because the projectile is only a gram instead of, uh, paintballs have got to weigh half an ounce or something, um, you know, 14 times as much maybe, or more, I'm, I'm just guessing. But um, like part of the fun for me is you're close enough to see the laughter on their face when you tag them or the, the oh man, you know, like, and we played CQB last week or two weeks ago with 150 cap and that's really fun when you come around a corner and you have those close quarter things where you, you tag each other and you laugh about it. And yeah. I like that part of it. Um, for competitive, it kind of makes sense to have the higher FPS, I guess, um, at least in the current field layouts that people have been doing. Because really what we've been doing so far with competitive is mostly imitating paintball. Yeah. No matter how paintball. you look at it, it's mm -hmm. like a symmetrical square or rectangle field, two teams capture the flag or, or something similar. Maybe that's why King of the Hill seems more attractive to me because it's less paintball. And that's why I like King of the Hill too. Yeah. It's also, like you're, you're you keep, keep cycling in and out. When you have only one life, man, do people get toxic about that. I yeah. said it. Yeah, it's very true. <laughs> it's, yeah. I mean, but it matters, right? Because then it does. every little it, tag, because if you was seen or not. If you really can matters. get in an infinite number of times, you just sprint back to yeah, the spawn, hit your, your spawn, spawn timer, and you get to keep playing. There's and I, room for error and that you know you it's but it's also a strategy you know getting yeah. out is a strategy yeah. and that means that you know there's a little bit more uh f like kind of flexibility in how your teams can play yeah and versus i, just I like die. that that <laughs> aspect um i'm not sure how the fps would change that could all probably stay the same with the fps but mm -hmm. at some point as a spectator sport the fps makes things worse um you know at 300 fps for paintball as a spectator you can barely see the paintballs flying you more see where they're impacting and hitting bunkers because someone's shooting 15 or 20 rounds a second. And, and so you'll see people getting hit, but you never see the projectile fly. At 150, you can still get to see the Nerf dart fly through the air, which is, I think, kind of fun. You might actually get to watch the exchange of you know, darts going through the air and actually tagging someone. Yeah. And then the fields get bigger. Mm -hmm. And it gets harder and harder to see. So the larger the field, the larger the FPS cap, the farther you're gonna be standing away from the action as a spectator, and the harder it is to film, too. I filmed paintball ages and ages ago, but uh, it's a challenging sport to film already. Yeah. And, and darts are even harder to, to police and, and see. And, and when you've still got the Nerf logo, or like, you know, we, we play with foam darts uh, attached as the kind of main advertising piece. If you can get people in at a lower, like, entry level, then it's going to be easier for them to warm up over time. If you only mm -hmm. have like those high caps, then it's going to be a lot harder. Because when people have like, oh, this is a 200 FPS cap, that doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, you can't bring anything onto the field that's not like up to like 150 or something. It's not like you have to be within this range. Yeah. It's like, no, no, this is just what we're saying is the ceiling. Yeah. But that means, of course, then anyone who's bringing in something that's subpar, depending on the layout, depending on the game mode, there could be some folks who come in with very high spirits and leave completely devastated. Yeah. I mean, here's a good comment. Uh, Lanks Xavier Desalia says, we need to be wary of high FPS bearing in mind that at least 75 players 75%. in large, 75 of large of players in large scale battles are kids. Would you want to hit your kid at 10 feet at 250 FPS? Um, I mean, I, I, I agree with the sentiment there. 75% are not kids, at least at all the games I've ever gone to, unless I go to a kid game. And at those, we are certainly not playing 250. We never play 250 with under 18 kids anyway. Uh, at least I can't think of a time I have. Uh, when we do a high FPS round, it's generally adults only. If they know what they're doing, they're wearing the right eye pro or face pro, then that's fine. But a lot of, for but the I, younger ones, they don't, Probably get it. Yeah, and at the <laughs> like in the, in the Bay Area, the kid, the younger games like Eban. E uh, I'm not in the Bay Area now, but that's where I used to play a lot more. Eban was 130. They might have gone up to 150 as the kids got older, but mm -hmm. it was 130 because it is mostly kids. But then the other events were like Burn was 18 plus. Yep. So we always played. Good. We I don't we, we didn't even have FPS caps at that point. A different. But time. I think at the end they were doing 150. 
Um, so I'm I mean, still also, you definitely should tailor the FPS to the event. Yeah, it, absolutely. I, it, it very much depends on where you are, who's playing with you. And I also think that 130 is fine for HVC. I don't think yeah. we need. Because no. uh, so there's also the morale discussion of like, you know, if you're being able to tag zombies super, super far away and like, or, you know, they get super close to you and, you know, it's actually very unpleasant to charge a human, infinite lives makes a lot, people who are more on the fence on playing zombie, even less interested If in you want to have fun, uh, if you want to have a lot of zombies running at you, you have to keep the FPS down. Because when you've got, especially if you want them to just like suicide run at you, where, you know, like you're playing HVZ and you got three zombies and you're running against 10 players, right? And you, <laughs> this is what we call- I'm quite good at that. This is the Luke run, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Only pro uh, gamers will the, understand um, this. But you know, like if you want, to, if you want people to, to work hard as a zombie and constantly rush and have, you know, actually make an effort, it's not, you can't, you can't raise the FPS too high. It's yeah. just, it stops being fun at some point. And HVZ isn't about high FPS. You don't, you don't need it. Everybody, they're all coming to you anyway. You it's don't important need to, to have a blaster that works yeah. for that one, which actually, we can transition on that one. Some of the new dart zone blasters, are, while they're cool, there are definitely some new dart zone blasters that kind of teeter that line where I'm not necessarily going to recommend every single one of them because mm -hmm. of some concerns in that case. Regular games, probably. Yeah. Like the Matrix Fire. Um, I don't know how much you've tested the Monolith either. A little bit, but little not, bit. Uh, not, didn't get to play with it. I'm going to play with it next game. Yeah, so that's like one unfortunate uh, thing with those. Usable, but if you want consistency. The feed rate on the Monolith is definitely a little not as good as the Percy's. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, but the price is right. The potato biscuit asks, since Piper is here, what do you think is the direction of Rival? Um, the direction of Rival from Hasbro, assuming you mean <laughs> brand direction, is they're not going to make any more. I think they're going to finish up this. Um, they just put out the flagship. Uh, the new uh, yeah, the curve, curve shot. shot. The Helix. The Helix? Is that, I just ordered it literally before we started the stream. <laughs> just ordered it, but what that are names? The, that and the uh, Tomahawk. The Tomahawk. <laughs> Tomahawk 60. The Tomahawk, Tomahawk 60. Um, but I think, I think that's probably it from Nerf. I would be shocked if they release anything but like a random little you know pistol or some other side project blaster not we i think we've seen the entire lineup that they had planned and i expect that it's hyper going forward for them i wonder if they'll do like knockout reskins because we'll like, probably see stuff they like do a that. bunch of you know stuff with jolts forever and maybe ever. we'll see some more star wars blasters that are rival but I, oh yeah tie-ins like with other but i think brands. honestly like they're gonna do this though because the ammo's smaller so like if you're gonna make a fortnite blaster or a Star Wars blaster or, or whatever, this is going to be easier to shove this air chamber and mechanics into fair one of those question. blasters. That said, Hyper's for 14 plus, isn't it? True. And Rival's 8 plus. Yeah, that's true. So it's been easier to tie in with those for the younger Wait, demographic. Rival's not 8 plus. Is it not? It's I, 14. Think, I think it's 14 plus as well. Shoot. It's literal. Um, Brett, you don't have kids, I can tell. It's literal excuse choking me, hazards. I am a child. Uh, you're right. Rival you're balls, right. I rival balls are literal choking hazards. I was hazards. thinking Ultra. Ultra is 8 plus. I keep laughing because everybody's complaining and talking about how this is going to be a major choking hazard. Rival is even probably worse because it is, it is literally the size of an esophagus. <laughs> I mean, they're both potentially terrible. I, yeah. I don't fire either of them in my house because I have a seven month old crawl, who's crawling everywhere now trying to. And we'll pick up everything goes into the mouth. <laughs> oh no, that's a Roomba. Outside brands like with Adventure Force models and stuff, do you think Rival has? Oh, that's a really good point. Per so Perry's mentioning the third-party brands or second-party brands. What are? Where's the future of Rival there? And it seems like they still have quite a few products, or at least some, in their pipeline. So I wouldn't be surprised. Dear Xshot, what are you doing? Where are your new things? Yeah, where have, you, where have you been? Where's our next dinosaur box? Well, Dark. we still need to film the previous one. Sorry, oh. Xshot. Oh, so that's Xshot sent us some really cool stuff that requires this. collaboration in other people. And um, not you an did a video. Time. I did not get to do the video yet. I, I still something. will, just because it was a cool, <laughs> cool thing. But yeah, they. I mean, I think third party, oh, like the monolith, three. we're going to see more. I don't know that we're going to see a ton, but I Whoops. honestly, if Hasbro pulls back on Rival, I wouldn't be surprised if we see more. Yeah. Wait, did you bring this? Yeah. Oh, you didn't know I already bought I it. I forgot you already had one. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Brett's fancy. He gets sent stuff from from uh, 
my favorite company. Dart Zone <laughs> does what has don't. Hey, that's cool though. Um, um, yeah. But I bet I bet Dart Zone still has more products coming in this lineup because probably makes more sense than trying to jump on a hyper equivalent. No, don't even don't. I wouldn't even bother if I were them. Or I wouldn't ultra try to chase. equivalent. Hey. I wouldn't try to. Oof, no. <laughs> no one's tried that one. So good job, Hasbro. You did it. You scared everyone away. Um, Willis Lewis asks, uh, what's my stance on Milsim HPAs? Um, if you're playing on a place where it's safe to do so and, and fine, that's, that, go for it. Uh, People who consent and also want to do that, just don't pull unconsenting individuals into it. There's no, there's no games we play at where that would make sense. Public parks and whatnot really don't, don't make sense. And then, like the CQB stuff we were doing, Metal Blasters especially would be... Um, it's worth noting, I do have... Harry, would you grab the um, Milsig uh, M79? Oh, this deserves plenty of space. I mean... Roll out the red so like, carpet. I haven't done the review yet on this. Where's the orange tip? <laughs> uh, I haven't done the review... Well, I haven't done the review on this yet, but this blaster is garbage. Um, and this has nothing to do with it against H HPA. HPA, like I've, I've seen that Neutrino blaster, performs very well, very accurate. Dab for the Milsig. There are plenty... But like this thing is not a good product. I bought this uh, initially thinking I might actually di distribute and sell them. We are not going to sell them. Um, this he is the least accurate blaster. A third party uh, who gave him advice to not do that as well. Uh, many I consulted many with many third parties, but you were, you were one of the, I was you were one of the important ones. Um, I might wear a like beret, this just, but no. Even blue, this doesn't belong in a public park, right? Um, but other than, other than that, like if you're playing on private property or whatever, or you or it's fine where you're playing. That's HPA is fine. HPA is probably the most superior ammo. I mean, propulsion method, right? You have the most uh, uh, the most kinetic energy trapped in that bottle that you're going to get from anything. But uh, it's like as far as this brand players. goes, I mean, this is literally broken. I cannot even do the review because the bolt is locked, and uh, yeah, I was and then there. some of these parts aren't supposed to be serviceable, and so I just. Wasn't that the and hot I'm not dog the thing? only one that Cameron, uh, uh, Walcom S7, has three of these and has issues with all of his either as well. And I haven't watched it yet, but I think Drax just dropped his video recently, so he beat me to it because his must have actually worked. I mean, you guys have had it for a while. I've had it for months because I was going to distribute, but it, that wasn't a. This is kind of a tangent because that wasn't really the question. That's just one brand <laughs> of HPA. Got to talk about the Milsig. But it is not a good start to to that side of the thing. Um, I don't think HPA is going to take off at our games and certainly probably not at places like End War and other other things, but yeah, I mean, if you've got the place to do it. it seems if you're like gonna go play at an airsoft field, who cares? Places with do. existing locations yeah. that already cater to that kind of like high performance, like re, um, firearm replica uh, toys, like airsoft, then that would be more where a Milsig style platform is viable. But then it's like moving on from that you guys already had problems with it. It's not just like this, the silhouette is concerning overall. It's like, okay, if you put that in its correct category, then we can still say, what is wrong with this thing? Yeah, Alex says, uh, uh, I think we flagged that for some language, Alex. <laughs> Repost it the other way. Uh, he's a buddy, but uh, we try to keep it PG here. Um, the, um, yeah, the Milsig is just, that thing is not, <laughs> it's trash, it is so bad. I don't know how to, and I don't really like making videos. I don't get joy out of, of like I bought the thing assuming I was gonna 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 drop a fortune. Like I, basically, if you take all my inventory in the whole warehouse, I was going to have to drop a money a amount of money that is equivalent of like a third of everything here, to 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 get going to sell those. And I was super excited because they looked good. I'm like, oh, here's here's a company coming from Paintball. They're gonna make blasters that are like really high quality and. That, that one let me down, so. And, and, you, and you said, I remember too, it, you said if this is going to be something that is an offering for the hobby, for people who want to use this in the right space, then you said you wanted to be kind of like a reliable source for yeah, them. Yeah, like, I wanted to support people could all buy, types you could buy, nerfing. They could buy from out of darts and that you would provide people with the correct knowledge and recommendations if they were to purchase such a product yeah. and like HPA safety and, and you know, in concern that they might go elsewhere if not. Um, but the I mean, the last thing I'd want to see is like those showing up on Amazon and people start showing up to games with them and they're, well, I mean, I don't know. It's just not. It was 150 on Amazon. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, except they're $400. Yeah, they're, exactly. They're it's very, it's a, it was a very disappointing blaster, unfortunately. I wish I didn't have it. 
because it was a waste of time, like all the testing and, and bought. It was, I, I paid like $500 by the time, because I had to have one airship to me yes. with the accessories, and it was $500 by the time I was done, and so that was a sad. Um, yeah, I think if Milsig does, if you, that's like your favorite thing to do, you might like Airsoft better. And as much as I want you in our hobby, because this is my life, this is my business, but um, I mean, you have to, you just can't do it at the, the places where we currently play. Yep. But I don't know. It's interesting. Super cores and sniper cores, very cool. Um, well made. The super cores have gone up in price. I'm not sure we're going to get them back in stock. We'll see. For Milsig. They're going to have to be... Yeah. <laughs> Pour one out for Milsig on the... Oop, oop. I mean, at least when I make... I mean, I bought that. <laughs> I did not have... Yep. They did not send it to me. So... Oh, shot thoughts on Shelby Destroyer. I am a little wary of the whole campaign. Oh, my gosh. Like, start to finish and some of the oddball things they've been doing. <laughs> I've been triggered the, again. <laughs> the, pay, the paywall thing, it sounds ah. like... They better not do the paywall thing, right? Because they were talking about features that you have so to pay more to unlock in the blaster. A blaster doesn't need an app. No. There, nothing needs an app. No, no. It needs an app, but the app can be, doesn't need to be, you don't, you have to have an app that is not necessary, and it has to be free. Or it's a remote operating, like, app. So blaster is on the other side of your warehouse, and yes. the app turns it on. Cool. Sure. Or Shelby, it changes settings. Shelby does not need to be destroyed. Save Shelby. Yeah, I mean, it's such a weird thing. I'm, I'm excited to see where, what they actually do when they release it. We'll see. Um, I did not order one because I had kind of a bad taste in my mouth after spending $500 on the Milsig. I do budget, even though this is my business, like to buy all these blasters and things. I could literally spend tens of thousands a year if I just went crazy. So I do actually restrain myself. Oh, and uh, yeah, I mean, speaking of things I bought this year that are disappointing, oh, no, no. Perry's holding so, something in his hand. Someone mentioned it in the, uh, in the live chat. Edison Puff says, any news from Orange Muggles? So this is something I'm, I'm getting a little mm, mil, miffed. A customer right here, paying customer, right? Yeah, I, I bought this, um, $150 plus shipping. It was about 175 and uh, the handle snapped off. I have talked to them. They said they were going to fix it, and they had filament problems and supply problems. Nobody had fired this blaster prior to it being shipped to me. Like, it literally had not been even test fired because I primed back and went, <laughs> broke the handle right off because it's thin, too thin an infill. The print quality was abysmal. Um, when I started in this hobby, Orange Modworks was one of the very first things I bought for Orange Modworks. Yeah, for Orange Modworks. <laughs> Oh, for Orange Mod That's Works. maybe not a good sign. Nope. And I, I've held off on doing a review of this. Obviously, I can't review it in its current state. It's a one out of five stars. It has, it's disappointing, you guys. Um, and for those that are, haven't been around or, you know, they were one of the earliest mod companies, which is super awesome. Yep. I bought my first spring kit ever from them. They came out with some, announced some really cool injection molded um, blasters that basically got canned and never made. Kind of got blamed on COVID. I don't know. Um, maybe we've had supply chain issues, so there's things, but still, I mean, as someone who hasn't purchased it, but at least tries to keep involved with like what people say, you know, like for products, just seeing what companies are, you know, chatting about online too. Very quiet. I, but nothing. And I, nothing? I emailed their mm. customer service. So they, was it two? Yeah, radio it's um, yeah. 11 weeks ago, 12 weeks ago now is when I got the blaster. So it's been three months to print a 3D printed blaster and get me a replacement and nothing. Uh, I emailed them about two weeks ago and yeah, didn't hear back. So we'll see. And there have been some, there were ones that worked just fine when they were, when they showed up. But oh, then so some people got functional Some ones. people got functional ones, but of course we know that not all of them were. And even then the you could see the, the qualities were questionable. Um, and if they did put out a statement that they were going to do what they said they would do, you know, like re um, get you a new blaster, I, then you would be expecting where's my blaster? a new blaster. So Something. We're obsessed with customer service here, and you're probably all customers and get it, right? We, we probably screwed something up, but we will always make it right. Um, I'd make, we've made mistakes too. I shipped uh, a bunch of FPS caps at the uh, launch of the FPS cap for the, um, the uh, uh, Nexus Pro, and a bunch of them got printed, like 100, 100, at least 100 orders went out with them printed two week of infill. And so like in hot sun, they could de decompress if left like with 
the spring load on there. Before they even got to people, we were already, I shipped all the, we shipped all the replacement ones to the same customers, gave them a discount code, and I wrote them personally, not an auto response, but like I wrote each person, sent 120, 130 emails, and we took care of it like that week. Within, I mean, like I, I lose sleep over this stuff. I don't know, I don't know how you do this three months later. I would not, I could not be in business because I care way too much about about the hobby and the people in it and the people that support our livelihood to, to do that. So I'm a little disheartened because they were, you know, Orange Modworks was around when I got in and another mm. click, now that. <laughs> Back in the Monkeytron Collective, hey guys. Oh, man, hi. I just sweet. got something from them that I'll have to show I haven't off seen them soon. for two years now, it was the last end war. SMH. Man. Um, yeah, back in the day, Monkey Trunk says, back in the day it was Orange Mod Works or Make It Yourself. And that literally was it when, when I started to. <laughs> With a few exceptions. There were blaster parts had just gotten some things going too. If all the milsigs are working in Australia, then that's great, but they're not working here. I think people <laughs> know how to use or like actually, you know, set their pressures appropriately. I don't think it's everyone in the U.S. is idiots. Some of us are. Definitely, but I'm not also using one of these things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Radio silence. Uh, uh, he's in here too. Man, I love the new. Um, we're putting together his new uh, cage fighter. I got to show you that later. Uh, cage fighter blaster. Mm. Super cool mini bullpup uh, fly flywheeler. Two stage if you want it. Single stage if you don't. Um, really, really cool. We're gonna hopefully offer them both printed and kits and everything. We're still trying to get that all going, but. Um, yeah, he says, uh, we're all here to dunk on, on Bill Sig cash grabbing in the hobby. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of true. Um, uh, do I think that uh, the supply shor shortage Orange Mod Works may have just bitten off more than they can chew? I mean, they already canceled an entire injection molded product line to make the 3D printed one because that was going to be easier to do sooner. I don't know the motivations. I mean, certainly we've had delays, but it's been it's been a while now. Yeah, and and you know, Obviously, as it is to be said, we, have, we all clearly have fond memories of Orange Mod Works. That's why we're like so rooting for them. It's like, you guys can do it. Like, we've, we've seen you from like the earliest space. It's like when you see Busby in stores way back when with Nerf, you're like, oh, if they keep at this, who knows what they could do? And then you just see them kind of trip every step of the way. And you're like, no, we want you to do really well. I mean, yeah, I, we're not here rooting for your downfall. We want a positive customer experience and we want you guys to earn an income as a result of that as well. If you make good uh, so, product, we will support. Uh, at Jolt King uh, says, I hate when I see people hate on Orange Mod Works. It was the gold standard for years. P people literally forget, people forget. Literally, they're only their last two things have had issues. Both times it wasn't their fault. Uh, let's get this straight. First of all, it's their last two, it's their only two things they've announced in three years, four years. It's it's all they've done. It's been a while since Is the, the Cybertech core, Cyber core, Cyber, Cybertech. Cyber core. Oh my oh gosh. gosh, what is that? Cyber Strike. No, Cyber Strike. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> no, uh, um, Cybercore, Cybertech, whatever. Cybertech is, is got to be it. Line. But um, they announced that, got everybody hyped up, took money, and then had to refund everybody like because of the pandemic. That could have been delayed and done. There's also initial It's the response. only two things they've released. They had since... unique style, like different sh uh, length of half darts as well. What's the last thing you can remember they released before that? Gold. The cylinder four or five years well, they ago? Had, yeah, they had the, and they had those at Ragnarok too, which was at, at the time when they were first, first showing off the designs yeah. for those. It was like, oh, cool, yes, these are good products. We love those. And that's why people were happy to take them. They had some cool patches I took as well. Um, but yeah, recently, just... It's not, I mean... That's why we're sad. We want them to do well. And here's the thing. I want them to do well. I backed the Cybertech Blaster, which I didn't get. I backed, exactly. I bought this. So not, I didn't get sent any, sent any of this for free. I want them to succeed. I want this hobby to grow. It is in my absolute best interest, all of us. I mean, same as you, you know, any YouTuber too. It's like we want to see this hobby grow because it's better for everybody. Um, I don't want, the, I'm not trying to hate on them. I mean, that's the whole reason we haven't done a review video. You know, if that was, if that was Hasbro, then they would have gotten my Ultra review. Uh, Ultra. So we've definitely given them the benefit of the doubt for sure. Recon Retaliator hybrid kit. That's right, they did do those. I don't remember when that was though. I mean, when was the Retaliator? I that's, knew. That's like six years ago now. <laughs> it's, it's a while. I mean, they, and they had a great Alpha Trooper kit. 
that's six years ago. Remember the Immortal or more? Metal, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, they had issues with refunds is what Nathan is Stern is saying. Yeah, they had issues with refunds because when you try to refund through a Visa or MasterCard or American Express four, five, six months later or more, oh, you, they didn't you do. can't reverse oh. the transaction. It doesn't, the, the service provider literally doesn't allow you to do it. So you have to track down those people manually and send them, send them money. I can't even refund your purchase normally after 90 days. I have to PayPal you the money or give you credit or figure out, work out some other way, but I can't go through the same purchase like it, you know, like a reversal. Yeah. So yeah, it's a, it's definitely a problem. Edison Huff, does OOD have brand colors? Um, not really. Um, we've got, I like, I like to keep things black and white and gray, kind of keep things neutral. Yeah. All, all black? Not all black. All black. No. Full Milson. No. <laughs> um, healthy competition does breed good business, that's for sure. Yep. Um, I think we're going to take like one more question. I do like lots of blue though. Lots of blue. Yeah. Blue blasters. Well, I, th I think like um, with the, the elite line, I think was a pretty good example of like, oh, that's a color scheme that I can get behind. Like the, mm -hmm. the blues and maybe like some dark grays or, or like uh, black with silver accents on the handles and then orange popping. I've, I've loved making blasters like that. And they've I'm clearly continued on some sort of, oh no. Uh, yeah, this. <laughs> I regret everything instantly. No, but I mean, they look all right. The color on this right. on on Lee 2.0 is awesome. So, we're talking colors we love. Color great. Blasters not so good. Jeez. Okay, one more question, and then I think we've got to uh, wrap it up here. You got anything picked out, Perry? Uh, We've been trying to keep up on them. It's always a challenge. Uh, here's one that kind of falls. Oh, I mean, I, so which, which, the question is, which blasters do I think lend themselves better to 3D printing, flywheelers or springers? I mean, That's it's right. kind of a cop out to say both, but really they both have some pros and cons. Springers, again, like the Lynx, you can print them in a way that just makes sense. Uh, they, you know, you're using layer lines to make them much stronger and it's, they're very reliable. Flywheelers, also good, because you can make any shape you want. And I mean, there's not, I think, both can be really, can really use the advantages of 3D printing. Uh, there's a lot you can do with 3D printing you wouldn't be able to do with a mold or you couldn't do cost effectively with a mold. I'm finding that now as I kind of play with designs that we might want to get molded someday that uh, my design skills are really based around 3D printing, which is a problem. Because there's things you can do that you just wouldn't, that's a, you can't have thick, chunky walls in places just because. That's a problem that other people should have though when it comes to designing stuff because that would make everything easier. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's an okay problem to have for your line of work. No, that's, it's everybody, it's universal. <laughs> but I think, I mean, they're honestly kind of, they're both, both good, very, very uh, similar. Yeah, Perry is our video guy, for those who didn't know, and he came to his first game ever just a couple weeks ago, which was pretty sweet. We had a good, good time. And then kind of the one to wrap up the stream, and maybe we'll take uh, Quick fire questions after that if we still have time. But in your guys' opinion, like where where is this hobby going after the last year or so of new Dark Zone releases and uh, unfortunately no games? But you know, how is how is the hobby going to? I want you to answer that one first, question. just because where where is the hobby going after kind of a mixture of lack of games but a lot of like new releases, especially strong offerings from Dark Zone? I think we're going straight down the toilet. Hot take, of course, but I think we've really kind of hit our wall. It was a good run that we all had, but nothing quite like uh, back in the day, shooting slugs out of uh, modified plus bows. So it's unfortunate. You, may, but you miss the cutting the darts and the PVC Yeah, I, I miss all that. Like, this is cool. Having a warehouse and stuff is great, but I'd give it like another month or two before you need to shut down. It's just gone. Just, just done. No experience really I can bring to this, but, you know, like, good, good try at least. Yeah. We had a good run. Uh, I think the oh, hobby, okay, the yeah, hobby is ahead. here to stay. The hobby is stronger than ever. 
We may not have had games, but there are more people getting introduced to this hobby every day than there ever have been, and the growth is exponential. Just getting Dart Zone products on shelves at Target and Walmart is game changing. I mean, it, the number of customers that have come to our store because of Dart Zone, it's, it's staggering. And it's uh, because they find this blaster and they realize, well, oh my gosh, this shoots really hard. I wanna find more like this and they start going online and then they find that there's a community and they find that there are games and all of this. And I think, I think the path forward is very clear. It's going to be a lot of third party competition for Hasbro. And I think it's really good for all of us. The more competition there is in that blaster space from I guess previously companies like Jet and hopefully Orange Modworks will come back and again, you know, do their flywheelers as well. That's for Jet. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to the real Mr. Jet. I would say also, like while Dart Zone's um, getting people's attention with their uh, reasonably powered performance blasters for uh, sometimes an older, you know, the teenage and up uh, enthusiast, um, Nerf has also gotten more eyes on the hobby because of their other tie-ins, whether you like them or you hate them, because yeah. I know there's a lot of, in some cases, justifiable hate, but like, you know, you got the Roblox tie-ins, the Fortnite tie-ins, Halo, all their Star Wars blasters, man, they really dropped the ball on Star Wars. Come on, guys, hopefully the Mandalorian blaster is good. Seriously, but, do better. But with all the extra eyes that come in as a result of those two, <laughs> I think you did. I think I, I did. I think you like kind of it was so waited much money. for a bit, and like, then you were like, oh, fine. Um, I think, you know, still people are finding those blasters, and they're like, oh, what can I do with this because it sucks? Or like, what is like, what else is there from this line? And they search up, and they realize that there's more and more stuff out there. And even if you're watching other videos like on YouTube, or you see just other people showing off those blasters, it does rabbit hole into like, oh wait, there's more. This is what exists now. And then some people who they used to like be familiar with Nerf blasters, they find out what exists on the market now. And sometimes that is Nerf related, and sometimes it's not. But they again are like, oh, their eyes are open to like whoa, that definitely wasn't around when I was young. I'm really curious now. And I'm sure there are people watching who've had this exact experience because I myself will get comments from people who like have been out for a while and then they come back in and they're like, dang, that's really cool. And maybe it was like the last blaster you would have thought on the market, like yeah. or on store shelves that would have gotten them interested to check it out again, but it is because they've just hit so many different corners now of the internet or just the um, store shelves. So at least with that in mind, good constant reminder that there are people entering with low skills and high enthusiasm of all age ranges. And for those people, they don't know what a Calibern is. Yep. So slowly educate them to what that and is be kind. over time. You gotta be kind, yeah. be nice to these people. These, and, and, and for the younger ones too, they're the future of the hobby. They're the people who with enough interest will start designing their own blasters or will continue to go to games and encourage and, their friends to come And who as might well. start the next company that yep. makes some cool blaster like Dart Zone. And be the next or... YouTube channel as well that will put yeah. ours out of business. We're in business. Thank goodness. Ah, your YouTube channel makes money? What is money? <laughs> I wish, I wish YouTube could be a full-time thing. It's kind of tough. Income. Uh, I think... Um, Demonetize. Oh, I mean, this is Searing Phoenix. That's a good wrap-up. It's basically, it's amazing that you can 100% get onto a field for like under $100. And geez, you could practically do it for 50. You just need some magazines. Yeah, $100. You're right. You get some magazines. Yep. You can have a full-blown loadout. I mean, when I started... Full day, with, with, uh, it, Easy. It, even just two years ago, Mm -hmm. It was a totally different game as far as you had to do some work to get, or you had to pay some serious money to get something really competitive. And if you're smart about that, you can make that loadout last for a couple games, like not just one day, but a couple yeah. days worth. Maybe you can refill your darts if you're, you know, yeah. if you're having to bring your own darts and stuff, but still, you can get a reliable loadout for I And I think that's great. I don't, not everybody has to uh, mod. Unless as much as I'm a mod shop, right? You don't. If you don't want to mod, you just want to play, that's cool too, because the games are, are a blast. Or you can dump thousands of dollars into multiple blasters, which you don't have space for. I also like that. That's also very possible. Can't speak from experience, neither of us can. I had to that, cut myself that off. That would too be much, weird. Too much spending. Porcupine, though. Should we end, end with the porcupine? End with porcupine. Here, let me put, uh, put in the Okay. Porcupine. The actual yeah. porcupine. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. Um, you have to say what it's for each time you tap the nose. Every time you tap the nose. Yeah, we'll see. What's it for right now? Now this can be for Ultra. For Ultra. <laughs> for Elite 2.0. For Milsig. Uh, um, for <laughs> Luke. Oh. <laughs> oh, no.
At Bray Nerf. Oh, man. Rig. I don't know if that means you win or lose. I, I don't know either. It is something. Hey, make sure to follow us on TikTok. Follow Brett on TikTok. I don't even know. We don't know how to do TikTok. No way. We got to extend the stream for another hour so we can talk about TikTok. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. <laughs> Until next time. I'm out of darts. And uh, sometimes I wear a beret. And my name's Brett. All right, roll the credits. <laughs> uh.